Much of life is about the stories that we tell ourselves, a perspective from one point of view. But what if the narrative is limited in its truth? Do we continue to believe the urban myth set within a family or a group? Or do you seek out the real story and seek to change the role that you play within it? The process of restoring the house continued unabated. Clearing out what was old and rotten, deciding what could be reused, what could be organised, what could be repaired, removed or reused, after years of neglect, was hard work. The goal was to see the potential in this old farm, to listen to its story and allow its voice to be once more heard. curious that as I went through this process I could draw a metaphor from this project to something that happened within my own life. I'm kind of in between jobs. I've got two on the go and it depends it depends on the sun. Uh, so I'm very sticky and very hot because it is uh, due to get to 30 degrees today, which is about the hottest that we've had for... I think the boat shed last year was pretty warm. I'm not sure it hit 30. Um, it's certainly warm. Um, so why, you may ask, am I spending my time clearing out the woodshed? And that is because if you notice the state of it, there is a lot of um, rotten wood. And our job, what we want to try and do is clear this out and, um, and have a dry floor so that one, any good wood that we can save can be saved and can be out in the sun drying out over the summer. And it also means that we can order wood for the winter um, and have that really dry. So hopefully that's a more efficient way of burning wood because that will be our uh, source of heat. But it's a really, it's a really sticky job and it's a really yucky job. But it's also um, pandering to my... <laughs> I've said this before. It's also pandering to my um, teachery organisational skills. So I'll take you on a tour. So what I have done is I have organised the rubble that was in here in two. So we've got terracotta rubble, building bricks that are in pieces. Terracotta bricks that are whole tiles, slate tiles that are whole. We have got, um, they grow like these cabbage things on these great big long sticks. So there's the stems of those which are over there. There is the wood that is shot to pieces, no good whatsoever, um, that needs to be stored somewhere and I don't know what we do with that. There is large blocks of wood that could be used for something. There is building material that is no good for anything. There is wood building material that doesn't have too much woodworm, could be treated, might be useful. There is a door and it's all, oh, there are sticks here, could be used as kindling. And there is wood here that is uh, drying out that may be useful. And there are tree branches that have clearly been cut down that could be used for something. And everything is organised into categories and placed tidily. I grew up in a dysfunctional family. What families don't have some form of dysfunction? In mine, 
It was the deterioration of my parents' marriage and the emotional volatility caused by the use of alcohol on my father's part. So, my job today is to start um, painting, I must say modernising, just um, beautifying this piece of furniture that we found in the old part of the house that was left behind. And we've got all the handles from the drawers and the actual cupboard itself safely away in a bag all fastened together so I'll see whether I can reuse those and clean them up or something. It's a nice clean back. And now we just go for a very gentle sand just to take the the key this surface in. And then I can start applying the paint. I tried not to rock an already rocky boat any further. I was the one who did everything perfectly, everything right. That was my story. My sister, the narrative was very different. She was the strong-willed one, and her choices clashed with what was expected. As she grew older, she medicated herself with alcohol and defended herself with her tongue, which could be fierce and defensive. But when her story was set so strongly for her and her actions judged accordingly, it was easy to see why. I slowly became aware of the story, very slowly, and began to question the plot. A dramatic turning point came in the last few years that caused us and enabled us to begin to tell each other our own family stories, our stories from our perspective, and suddenly I came to realise the misinformation and false truths that I had been told about her and also my part in complying with it. My sister and I are by no means perfect and we have many scars to manage. My sister is forthright speaks her mind and has many amazing creative gifts and a dear soft heart mingled with an incredible lack of confidence. We have a journey to travel together, my sister and I, and I call her now my sister. We've said it to each other as if in our later years, we have suddenly found each other. We are not rivals. We're friends. That is a precious gift to me. That is a journey worth pursuing and worth admitting my faults in allowing a story to continue that was not true. Is the chest of drawers or the cupboard or whatever. So I've just started to put the first coat of the paint, chalk paint on. The reason why it's on its side is because I just needed to sand these lovely designs on the bottom and then in a little while I'll turn it up. Um, but I'm going to get on and do this and put a couple of coats of paint on and then I will show you the finished item. So, um... The, we've now got the chest of drawers, or the drawers, painted. They're gorgeous, aren't they? They're amazing. So the drawers are all in that room, and they're done. And we've got this painted with this beautiful kind of sea green colour. I don't know what it's called. I need to find the can of paint. I'll show you. Hang on. Wait there a minute. I can't make a... 
an advertisement for this because it's all covered <laughs> with the paint. Brugge. But it had something on chalk, chalk something or other, tinta. But it says, no glasses, azul perfundo, azul perfundo. So that's definitely blue something. Um, but that's the colour that we're using, it's just a tin of um, chalk paint. So the job now, today, I've actually put two coats of paint on this one. Um, but I'm wondering whether that was a good idea or not. So I'm going to distress it. I have no idea what distressing it means. Uh, so we'll just take it from there. If I don't like it, I can always paint over it again. Um, so I'm going to distress it and then the next step will be to wax it. And then we have a... Oh, so I did this uh, yesterday and the day before. So in between other jobs. And then it's been left to really dry before I do... Um, any of the other stuff. So I'm going to get a piece of sandpaper and just give it a good old de-stressing, which is great because then I can uh, get rid of any of the drips or mistakes that I've made. Excuse me. It troubles me that we seem to live in a time where a story can be widely told and believed without question, and the person or group held captive within its narrative. Yet I wonder if we seek out a first-hand account and look for the possibility and seek to understand a far richer tale may be crafted. Something very beautiful may well emerge from what was apparently discarded. If you would like to hear more stories of life on this mountain and the ponderings it inspires, subscribe to this channel, click the bell so that you know when the story is ready. And before you go, do give this a like. See you soon. <laughs>